Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time! We are still in 1984. Today, we're going to talk about Hero. The story of Hero takes us back to Activision. We have talked about Activision several times before. They have been responsible for Kaboom and Pitfall. We last talked about Activision in our video on Pitfall 2, Lost Caverns. For Hero, Activision turned to John Van Ryzen. John Van Ryzen is an American video game designer. He had previously designed some small games for the Apple II when Activision hired him. Hero, short for Helicopter Emergency Rescue Operation, is an action game. The player plays as Roderick Hero, sometimes known as Our Hero, who must rescue miners trapped in Mount Leone. Roderick is a one-man rescue team, equipped with a helicopter backpack, a helmet-mounted laser, and some dynamite. To stop Roderick, there are creatures, cave-ins, water, and magma. If the player is able to overcome these obstacles through multiple screens of each mine, the goal is to reach the miner before the power runs out. The player does not need to bring the miner out with any remaining power. The player will earn an additional life for every 20,000 points. Activision released Hero to the Atari 2600 on March 30th, 1984 in North America. Activision would also release the game in Europe in 1984 and Japan in 1985. That is the brief backstory to Hero. With that now told, it's time to play the game for ourselves. And here we are in the game. This is Hero. We're going to let the demo play a little bit here. The demo is actually pretty good at the game. Uh, the demo will make it through a few levels. That was the first one. The, the game can go very quickly, uh, but it also kind of just shows you how to play. If you're kind of unclear on what to do, the... The demo will pretty much just show you what to do. It's also kind of weird that uh, you start off by needing to blow something up. So if you're really unclear, don't know what to do, then I would recommend checking that out. All right, so uh, we're not going to let it go too far here. We're just going to head into it because I'm not going to make it necessarily too far in the game, but I, I should be able to make it through a few levels. Let's go ahead and uh, play for ourselves here. All right, so on to level one. Uh, what you need to do to start is blow something up. You blow something up by pressing down. That drops the dynamite. Then you need to get away from the dynamite because it will destroy you. All right, like instantly. Now... Let's go this way. Uh, another strategy that I tend to use is if it looks like there's a harder path and an easier path, you probably want to go the harder path because it'll save you in the long run. Drop that down. Okay. I managed to avoid all that. Blow up this way. Uh, the enemies that are kind of in the shaft like that, I haven't figured out a way to destroy them. I don't think there is one. You just have to kind of pick the right path in this game. <laughs> but because I've done it a few times, and I've seen the demo a few times, I know a few things. All right, we're going to destroy that because that's the harder path. And it turned out to be the right one, I would say. Can I hit that one? Nope. Okay. Blow that one up and drop down here. Yep, this was the right path. The other one, I probably would have died. Yeah, it takes a little bit for me to actually take off when I hit the up button. I don't think a lot of people experience that, but I definitely do. And there is our first magma. You can't do anything with magma, really. Oh, I remembered that one. There's magma down here. It's kind of tricky. Because a lot of times, I just drop straight down. Just kind of hoping that they don't screw me over. But the game likes to screw you over. <laughs> There's a lot of like, well, I hope you chose the right path in this one. Alright, we're doing really well. I got an extra life. We're on to level 6. Let's drop that down there and see what else I can do. We got a good run going. I'm going to blow this up. And drop down there. Kill you. 
Uh, second from the left, I think, is the right one. Nope. Well, maybe. There we go. Yeah, he's got uh, lasers mounted on his forehead. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but that is the case. He is a one-man rescue operation by himself, but uh, once again, we don't actually rescue in my mind. We just get to the miner and say hi, and then we're done. All right, let's uh, go that way. Drop down here. Now, what a lot of people recommend, and what I honestly would recommend, uh, but I don't necessarily have the capability to do, is um, anytime you fall, to kind of already be, um, ooh, to kind of already be flying. Ah, figured. Thought I could get him, uh, but yeah, when I'm flying, mm, now I'm not playing well. All of a sudden. Uh, to already kind of be flying when you get to... Jeez. This level, man. This level. Okay. Up. Go over here. Just very carefully. <laughs> okay. I broke my own rule there and didn't go the harder path, but... And that is doom. I didn't realize that was water, to be honest with you. But that is a fairly good run, uh, 32,000. But uh, yeah, that that's essentially the game. Uh, there's only, uh, I believe, 20 levels in total. So uh, that was a, a good showcase of the game. Uh, like I said, it takes a lot of memorization to kind of figure out where you're going to go. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a, that's a good showcase of the game. So with the game now played, it's time to talk about how it holds up today. Playing the game today, I do have to say that the game is fun. And it would only get more fun, I feel, the longer that I played the game. The more that I memorized certain things, I could make it to further levels, and I would have more fun with the game. Uh, my major complaint, and pretty much my only complaint, uh, about the game would be uh, the cheap deaths that happen in the game. It's common for the time, so it's hard to be particularly critical about it, but there were definitely some times when I dropped down to the next screen and, you know, I just chose poorly and therefore I died or I needed to immediately go left or right or hold up so that my character kind of flies a little bit. That kind of thing I'm not a huge fan of. Like I said, though, it's typical for the time, so it's hard to hold it particularly against this game, but that's pretty much my only complaint about the game. Everything else is pretty solid. The gameplay is fast-paced. Uh, it feels very fair. The controls are are very good. Uh, my only thing is, you know, dropping the dynamite. I wish there was a second button on the Atari uh, 2600 so that I could hit a different button and drop the dynamite as opposed to hitting down when, you know, I'm trying to go down so that I can land, uh, that kind of thing. But overall, the, the controls feel very good. Uh, the graphics are also very good. Everything looks like it's supposed to. Everything, you know, you even have a character with a helicopter backpack and lasers coming out of his forehead. And that's what it looks like. It looks like that in an Atari 2600. That's not always easy. Uh, the enemies look like they're supposed to. The snakes and spiders in particular. Even the magma. Sure, it works. Um, once again, we're kind of talking about the limitations of the console itself as opposed to the game. Uh, the sound is also very good for the console. The, the sound is... Um, you know, things that sound like explosions. I don't know, the death was a little odd for me, but everything sounds good or fine. Uh, and so it's a good game. Uh, in terms of replayability, this is a game that I think has a high replayability factor because as you get better at the game, and by better I mean memorize things, uh, you'll get further in the game. I should point out that there are only 20 levels to the game. Once you beat level 20, it just kind of randomly chooses a, a higher level game for you to go through. Um, so once you get through level 20, you've kind of seen all that the game has to offer. So all 20 levels, uh, but it doesn't really have a, a set ending like a lot of games at the time don't. Uh, but overall, this is a good game uh, in terms of recommending it for people. If you are interested in older 
action, maybe even some platforming elements to it, platform style games, uh, then this is a game worth checking out. Uh, if you're looking at some of the better games of the Atari 2600, this is also a game uh, worthy of checking out for you. Uh, if you're not necessarily interested in those games, then obviously this doesn't have too much for you. Uh, but if you are interested in retro games, this is definitely something worth checking out which is a little surprising to me coming into this. I wasn't expecting that, but that is my modern take on the game. When the game was originally released, Hero did not prove to be very successful. The game would not be a bestseller for the Atari 2600. However, the critics at the time were very positive about the game. Hero would be ported to several different systems, including the ColecoVision and the Commodore 64. These versions of the game would also prove to be popular among the critics. With another success on their hands, Activision would continue to be a big name in console game development. We will be hearing from Activision again. While John Van Ryzen would continue to work on video games, none would reach the importance of Hero, and we will not be hearing from John Van Ryzen again. That will do it for the story of Hero. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video when we get the amulet.